All right, my friends, welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today we're going to talk about um, leaving leaving console and going to PC uh, when you have a lot of digital games already on your PS5 or your Xbox Series X. Um, here's here's what here's because I I just read a comment um, on on the channel. It says, "Great video, man. How did you face coming to PC?" <laughs> and leaving your games behind on console. I have a PC for like three years now, but playing some PC exclusive games and other uh, and another old game from the PS3 era major releases played on console. Now I fully leave Xbox behind my console break and the price to fix it wasn't worth it and looking to buy a 4070 Super. But when I get back to see so many games uh, and see so many games behind, I feel pain for money I spent and some games I've not even played yet. So, uh, um, mate, Medusa, <laughs> I, I don't know how to say that name, but okay. Let, let me let me uh, let me answer that question for you because that is a very big topic and something that um, seriously drives a lot of us nuts. Because on the consoles, we we do we buy a lot of games. We get a lot of games through PS Plus. We get a lot of games through Games with Gold. Um, and, and then just buying digital games, all the games that we've accumulated and amassed over, over the years as we've been console gamers. And, and that is a, a lot of money that we've invested because most of the time we've probably bought a lot of those games at launch. We've paid full price for them. So the, um, the thought of leaving those behind, it really can, it really can form an emotional, um, attachment to that ecosystem and here's here's the thing just up until recently um, PlayStation and Xbox didn't really I mean they did but they didn't really care about backwards compatibility as much as 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 you would as 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 we would have liked to I remember leaving PlayStation 3 and going to PS4 um, there were still a lot of games that were still coming out that were they were still coming to PS3, like Grand Gran Turismo 6, um, and other games that were still coming to PS3 that were not getting ported across to PS4. So, you know, leaving all of those games on the PlayStation 3 to move to PlayStation 4, that that was <clears throat> that was already difficult, but I think you know, ever since the PlayStation 3 generation, you know, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 generation going forward. Um, we've always had this, I, I'm not saying that, I mean, PlayStation, obviously, when PS3 came out, we could still play PlayStation 2 games on it, um, same with PS2, we could play our PS1 games on it, but then the PlayStation 3 kind of ruined that for the PlayStation side, which had always been pretty good about being, you know, backward compatible, um, Xbox, you know, I don't think there were backwards compatibility with 360 from the first Xbox, um, but then after a while, then we started getting, you know, backwards compatibility for, for Xbox one ga or Xbox 360 games and Xbox one games. So both, both PlayStation and Xbox have really started to put more effort into making backwards compatibility more of a thing. But let me tell you guys, going from console to PC and leaving games behind, it's not really like that. It, it's not as it's not as bad as I thought and 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 I feared it first um, so one of the ways that um, that I've that I've dealt with this and figured this out is at first I was only going back and buying games that I absolutely wanted to keep playing and and I would buy those on the PC but we also have a, a, one of the things about that is you know, First, I would start with games that you haven't played yet and that you want to buy. Um, usually, you can find really good sales on Steam. They have sales all the time. You just get on Steam and you look at those lists. They do like um, they they do they do pop sales all the time. Like every time you log into Steam, there's always another sell on there. Go through there, look through and see what games you 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 want to keep. Um, First of all, I would write a list out of all the games that you got or maybe just, you know, get on your Xbox and think or your PlayStation and be like, okay, what are games that I really want to move forward? Um, a lot of first party games from Xbox are already, if you bought them digitally, you've already got them because you've got play anywhere. You just down, you just get into the Xbox app. You'll already have a lot of those games already. You don't need to rebuy any of those games unless you absolutely want to have to play them on Steam. 
Uh, another thing with the Xbox titles is they are, if they are play anywhere, they are smart delivery. Therefore, they've got your save is cross your your, your save will trans you, your save will transfer from your Xbox to your PC and vice versa. So Xbox is a lot easier to move over to the PC than than it is for like the PlayStation right now. Um, if you can't find the games that you're looking for on Steam to buy them at a discounted price, um, usually, um, I'll, usually I'll, I'll buy like a bunch of them at a time. There'll be they'll be anywhere from like two to ten dollars, and I'll and I'll buy multiple multi, uh, I'll buy a lot of those games. You know, like pretty like pretty quickly. I'll just keep buying them. Another way to get cheap codes or keys for your PC is to look at places like Aniba. CD Keys, G2A, um, and some of them other uh, websites out there, <clears throat> where you can buy a buy a key off of those websites, and and you can get like you can get that game for free. Always be looking on Epic Game Stores. Some people say they don't like Epic Game Stores, whatever. But Epic Game Stores gives away free games all the time. Like I literally just got another. I, I just literally got a free copy of um, Outer Worlds for free and it, and it's like the 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 gold edition or whatever so always keep an eye out for that leaving leaving your console games behind is is something that is is something that a lot of us fear a lot of us you know when we're when we're considering moving over to pc we're, we're thinking like gosh man i got all this money invested in there i've got all this money you know all these digital games everything that i've bought that i've worked so hard and i've spent a lot of money on the, the the better the best thing is the best thing about it is is when you move over to PC and you rebuy those games and and I know that's 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 a big ask sometimes to to have to rebuy the game so so start with the games that that are most important to you most important to you and whatever and find a price range that you feel comfortable investing that much more money into that game um, I do always recommend trying to buy them on Steam. That, that way, the, at least the developer gets you know some more money out of it. If you buy it from GTA or Neba or CD Keys or something, I don't think the developer will receive any of that money. But here's the thing: if you like that game enough to where it's something that you want to have and want to keep owning, it might be worth it to you to actually you know provide the developer with a little bit more support to buy another copy. To and 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 it's. And it's like one one of the ways I look at it, and this is this is true. PlayStation be charging us ten freaking dollars for upgrade fees, and when I find the same game over on the PC and it's like ten dollars or under, I'm like, yeah. So I just I in my head I just say, yeah, I'm just paying for an upgrade fee because you really are getting a full on, you know, you're getting max settings, you're getting higher resolution, you you're you're getting basically a completely new overhauled experience when you buy that game again on PC. So it's like, sometimes it's a big deal. Sometimes it's not. If you look at it that way, it might make it a little bit easier for you to rebuy that game. But here's the, th here's the kicker, man. Once you buy it on PC and you own it on PC, I mean, if, especially if you buy it on GOG, um, if you buy it on GOG, those games are DRM free. They're not going anywhere. If you buy it, if you find one and you buy it on there, awesome. That's probably one of the places I would look first for older games is GOG. But <laughs> once you buy it on PC, you don't have to worry about backward compatibility as much anymore. Every now and then there will be a game that will not work with newer with with newer um, GPUs and stuff. But then eventually somebody comes along and they fix it and they crack it and they make it so it still works again. Like there's workarounds for like prototype. You just disable some of your cores and your, your CPU cores and then you can play them on your PC and stuff. And but but it's but it's like that, you know, there's 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 always somebody out there that is trying to preserve and and make your game still play. And, you know, and I have more comfort buying games on on Steam than I do anywhere else. You know what I mean? Like or, or on the PC, because at least I know that there's going to be a way to continue to play those games one way or another. Um, and, and, and that's awesome. That's amazing. So leaving the games behind and moving over, it's, it's only going to sting for the first little while. It's only going to sting for the first little while. And, and as long as you still have access to the console generation that you have, but when you move over to PC, 
you'll you'll still have access to those games but if you just keep rebuilding your your steam library pretty soon you'll have so many games on steam that you won't even it won't even matter anymore like it, it won't matter it's gonna matter at first and it's gonna sting and you're gonna feel and you're gonna feel a little bit uneasy about it i know i did but then i but then i thought well dude i've got my xbox right there i've got my playstation right there i want to see what this game looks like on the pc so i'm gonna buy another copy and, and, and pretty soon it'll just take over and it'll feel natural and you'll be like, okay, cool. Because you, you're not in no hurry to really go out and replace your, your, your catalog of games when you find the time, when you find the, when, 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 when the, uh, when, when the, uh, when the, uh, when the time comes to rebuy that game again, um, you'll, you'll be able to get it at a decent price. So you're not going to be paying a whole lot of extra money for, to, to replace your, your, your library from your consoles. I've spent, I've spent significantly less money buying games on PC and like filling out my, I mean, I've been through the one thing I've been working on, like the racing games. Um, that one's, that one's a little bit tricky because some of those games, they will, um, no longer be sold due to the fact of licensing for like cars and stuff like that. You know, games that have like certain types of music in them, they, they might be a little bit harder to find after a while. So I would I would I would prioritize certain games over other ones just just due to the fact that like you're you're going to want to still be able to play these games and you're going to you're going to want them. And and it is a, it gets a little bit more tricky after a while to to start buying some of these games. So, yeah, man, like. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I'm not leaving anything behind. If it's something important, I make sure I buy it again um, as soon as possible. If it's an important game to me, I, I make sure I own a copy of that on Steam or one of the other PC launchers. Um, definitely go into the Xbox app first. Make sure that you have an, uh, make sure that you, you know, j just make sure before you go out and buy a whole bunch of those games. There are some third-party games that are play anywhere. Make sure you go in there, go into your library, look over all your games, and make sure th that you're not buying an extra copy if you don't need to. Um, <clears throat> you utilize, utilize, um, you know, on PC you can utilize stuff like EA Play or yeah, it's EA Play Pro. So if you if you pay the fifteen dollars a month for EA Play Pro, you can play any game that's on EA day one. Right when it comes out, don't have to worry about that. Same with Ubisoft Plus. If you if you sign up for Ubisoft Plus, you're gonna have all access to everything in in Ubisoft's catalog. Um, same with with um, same with uh, gosh dang it, what's it called? Uh, with with Game Pass, you're gonna have access to all of those games. So there's there's some things that you might not need to rebuy, or or if you just want to play it, you can utilize one of those services to to uh, to be able to play those games. Um, they're, they're, you, you save a lot more money on PC when it comes to gaming. A lot more money. You're, you're not going to have to pay for your online games. You're not going to have to pay online fees to save your games anymore. So, overall, at the, at the end of the day, my, my advice to you guys is at the end of the day, if the game is very important to you, if it's something that you just can't live without, if you, if you can't live without it, and it... And it I mean, and, and seriously, if you feel that way about a game, it's worth spending more money on. It is. I mean, it is worth giving the developer more money. Because if that game is that good and it touches you that much to a point where you've, you've got to have it on your PC, absolutely it's worth rebuying. I, I mean, I've bought games on PS5 and Xbox, the same game, and PC. So it, it doesn't necessarily bo bother me to, to buy something that I love. I, I It doesn't bother me. I, I mean... Some people it might they might be like oh man I want that game or you know the the only thing that like really sucks is leaving your save behind I think leaving your save behind is a little bit more stressful than 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 actually like buying the game again but I mean if it's a good enough game you'll replay it I've replayed a lot of games I, I've been replaying a lot of games since I've I moved over to PC so yeah guys at the end of the day man obviously. It's it's not as big a deal as you think it will be. Um, if if the game really matters to you, you're gonna replace it eventually. You're gonna build your collection on Steam pretty quickly. There's enough sales, and you'll see games as cheap as like a buck. You'll you'll see games as cheap as a dollar, and you'll be like, gosh dang, I love that game. And then you buy it, and then there's like a whole new experience over on the PC. You you get to replay that game at the max settings and everything. So in a way, it's really worth it to rebuy your games and to replace like to to go through your your collection and start rebuying some of this stuff. And 
and just you know knowing that you have peace of mind that you're you're going to be able to play those games a lot longer and and they're going to continue to get um and and they're, and they're going to be beautiful like you're going it's it's almost just like paying for an upgrade fee if you if you if you want me to be completely honest with you so all right my friends i hope this video helps if it does hit that like and subscribe button and uh we'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching